Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. I'm here with local fighter to my area, Louis Norman. Thought I'd get some words. What's going on, bro? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. good. Big smile on your face. Uh, you got, got a big event coming up tomorrow? Yeah, wedding day tomorrow. Uh, my and the girl in my dreams. So, yeah. <laughs> all, all good. A bit nervous. I'm more nervous for this, actually, than I am a fight. Than a fight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. How have you been, man? How's, uh, how, how's things been since the last fight? You know what? Things have been good. I've been, I've stayed in the gym, which is a good thing. Obviously, keep keeping fit, ready in shape. Um, I wouldn't say I'm close to my weight, but I, just, I can lose weight either. So if someone said I got the phone call, but after my last fight, Mrs. actually said to me, you're not fighting, it's after the honeymoon, so <laughs> it's, it, whatever she says goes. I know the feeling. Last fight was uh, Jules Phillips, wasn't it? Is that... Yep, it was on the Sandburn when he won the British title. Okay, yeah, yeah. Part of that. Um, yeah, it was just a good fight to get back in there. Obviously, I fought four weeks before that against Tom Sassan for the English title. And got stopped with a body shot, unfortunately. But because I was winning up to the, that point, um, I said to Carl, I said, right, get me back out there. And Carl Greaves, my manager, is absolutely brilliant at what he does. He says, yeah, let, let's do it then. So obviously got it back in the ring with Jules Phillips, who, is, who actually boxes it featherweight. So obviously someone a bit bigger. Um, but no, it was a good fight to be in there. It was, it was good, and I enjoyed it for once. How did that fight, fight play out, uh, for, for those who didn't get to see it? Well, it went to points. Um, yeah. I hit him with some big shots and just went budging. You know, when someone you hit him, they just shake the red, you think, nah, there's no point. I was hurting my hands every time I hit him, so I, I knew I won't go get a knockout. But like I say, my style is a kind of Nassim Hamid kind of style where you're moving around, being a bit of cocky, a bit of show, a bit of respect at the same time. Um, with the Jules Phillips, it was a lot tougher than I expected. I think he, at the time, I think he had 17 and only won about three, I think. Um, so I never overlooked him, but I thought, yeah, We'll probably try and get him out of there, but I think after the third round, pulled my shoulder out a little bit. Um, so I thought, right, this is great to point. Just, just enjoy it. Just get back in there and get winning. Yeah, because you keep your hands down when, when I've seen you in fights. You keep your hands down a little bit, don't you? Yeah. And move about. Is that Naz? Is it... That Naz, I think, um, obviously, my dad, my dad's actually boxed Nassi, my mate. I yeah, think yeah. growing up and stuff, I think my dad's kind of tried to taught me in a different kind of style. We don't like to be the basic style. We like the Roy Jones Jr., the Pernell Whitakers, so it's kind of. Um, if you get away with it, why not do it? Yeah, see, they're, they're my fighters. Naz is my favourite British fighter. Yeah. I love Pernod Whitaker. You like Floyd in that, don't you? I love Floyd. My dad's yeah. actually got a sleeve with Floyd Mayweather. He's, he's even named the dog Floyd. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, no, I'm a Floyd Mayweather fan, but obviously I'm more, like I say, you Pernod Whitaker. And my, you know what? Emmanuel Augustus, it weren't world class, but the showmanship and everything right, he yeah. was brilliant. Like, drunken master. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone it suits everyone, but for me, that's entertainment. So... So what, you know, what are your thoughts right now um, with boxing in 2018? What are your thoughts? How, how do you feel about the, the sport? Because you've had a, a couple of losses, haven't you? So yeah, I think um, since the Charlie Edwards fight, it's all gone downhill. Yeah, it was from them, wasn't it? Yeah. I think um, the losses what I've got, I can actually say I've not lost against just anyone. I've lost against Andrew Selber, Tom Sosomba, Carl Youssef, um, Don Broaders, which the Don Broaders one for me was a learning fight. Um, I did lose it, on on paper I did, but a lot of people even says, yeah, you won that by about four rounds. But it's boxing, you, you live and you learn. And like I say, the losses what I have had, I can't say, oh, yeah, I've, I've lost to Muggs. But now, obviously got a pro proper like, management team around me, um, my dad training me, I think it could be a big end to this year, which I'm, I'm which I'm hoping for. I've had a good start, so I'm really looking forward to it. That's what I was going to say. What's your, where is your mindset at the moment with the sport? Are you a little bit dejected with it, or are you thinking, do you know what, I'm ready to... I think before the last Don Broaders fight, that was over, I think it was two years ago, that I was doing my boxing after that. I thought, no, I've had enough. I was, I was waking up on park benches, drinking vodka. I, was, I lost the plot. And I, in some ways, I think I was depressed. You know, I, I did lose a lot of love for the sport. Um, January, the, the year after, I'd I done some sparring with um, a kid called um, Sean Davis. I'd done no training at all, but he'd come over and I trained and I sparred and I thought, you know what, I am quite good, Let, let's stick at it. So I said, carried on, obviously I'd done a couple of losses, but then you just live and you learn, you realise this is boxing, you win and you lose. It's nice to just win all the while, but them losses, they're not losses to me, the learning You're curve. taking something from exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. um, if I've gone 100% like I did against Andrew Silva, when you've lost, you've lost against a better man. Um, but like I say, I love boxing. 
So I was never, I could never ever say no. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. I want to be world champion still. So, what what took you to those depths when you said you were sort of like drinking on park benches? Why, if it's not think, too personal, why? why did no, you get I think I had a lot of things happening outside the ring. Um, I went through a bad breakup. It, in in some ways, it was a blessing because obviously I've, I'm, I am who I am today. But it was with a boxing. I think a lot of people don't see the hard time in boxing. They see the glitz and glam on the night. They don't see you getting up at five o'clock in the morning to do your runs and doing a full day at work, then go and train. You literally have no time. I've, got, I've, I've not really got friends, you know, I'm, really, I'm not really bothered, you know, really boxing's my life. So, um, but no, I, I can remember I was waking up a part bench thinking, no, nah, I don't want, I don't want to be here anymore. Not just in boxing, it was, it was just in life in general. Really? But I think I, then this is where obviously it went up. But I met my beautiful wife to be Jade and. In some ways, she's a lifesaver. Obviously, I've got a good family behind me, and obviously they support it. And I don't think they actually know what extent, obviously, I went down. But no, they've always been there for me. I've got a cracking brother who's my best man. He, he, he picked me up. He's like my best mate as well. So I think like certain people saved me, really. And um, yeah, they just got it back in the ring. If you don't mind me asking, was that due to the losses while you was? I know it's yeah, some things outside. Yeah, with, with, with the losses, I think yeah. when you've got the losses. When that Don Broaders one, I think... Because you work so hard for something and you kind of um, you get ripped off. Like I say, as soon as the fight wins, I'm not normally the one to kind of go, oh, I've won, I've won. I went straight up to Matthew Macklin. Matthew bows it, sitting outside the ring. Says, oh, what do you reckon? Well, I've got you up by four rounds. I've even spoke to people from Birmingham, say, right, we had you up five rounds. So when people say that to you, you get disheartened because you think, that was, that was my yeah. win. You know what I mean? This is, this is not just a sport, it's my life. So when something like that happens, it knocks you even further back down. Daniel, so yeah, because us as fans, when um, you lose a sort of close decision or, or, or you lose a decision like that, we sort of move on, I guess. But for you, th this is it's your life, isn't it's it? It's life. It's... I think because I've devoted my life to it since the age of three. I think because I'm training so hard and I want it so much. When I lost to Don, it was um, it was hard. It was hard. When I lost Charlie Edwards, that that. It was my first loss. I didn't know what it felt like because I know what it felt like. When you lose again, you think, "Hang on a minute, what's happening? I'm I'm training my ass off. Right, what yeah. can I do to win?" So, but no, I think I've learned from that. And you kind of look at now when I got beat by a car, you say, "Think, you know what? I'm giving all I've got. That's all I can do. If I'm getting beat by the better man, fair dues." So you're just going to keep cracking on. And um, what 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 have you learned from the losses with regards to t training? Uh, um, and set up. Are you changing things there, or is it technique? Or I think just... I've changed my management this year. Obviously, I've got the new Carl Greaves. Um, I've been with the Shinfields and Clifton Mitchell, and to be fair, they've been brilliant at what they've done. They've done what they can do for me, but it wasn't f for me. Um, with Carl Greaves, I've known Carl for a long while, and I think um, it's going to be a special partnership in the next couple of years. Because I'm 24 now, and I've done a lot of saying I'm only 24. So I'm looking forward to the next couple of years. Be a big year with Carl, and I think changing things. I've I've not really changed much. I think it's whatever Louis Norman turns upon the night. Okay. I think it's a mentality thing. So I've always suffered a bit of confidence issues. I think if I turn up on night thinking I'm yeah I'm the dog's bollocks, it, it's different. But like I say, I could have fought Andrew Selby. Andrew Selby could have had the worst night of his life, and I could have had the best night of my life and beat him. It's whatever fight it turns upon the night. So. It, like I say, it's not about change. I'm a fit lad. I know how to box. It's just about improving things. You never stop learning boxing. So, what do you think is going to contribute to you having that correct mindset for your next set of fights? Because you, you obviously, quite clearly, you don't want to go into them and have more losses. So, to no, speak. You, I you, think you, when you walk to the ring, every boxer knows. You kind of feel like, oh, do I feel good? Do you feel not? I think. When you've got a confident mindset, obviously not overconfident, you can never never overlook anyone. You've got to kind of stay focused. But I think if you go in there, if you get hit with a shot and kind of just give up, you think that's going to lose you the fight straight away. You can't deflate. You you if it's a twelve round fight and you're losing up to six rounds, you've still got six rounds to pull it back. Yeah. So you've got to stay confident all the way through the fight. But that's just me, and my personal. They've probably got other boxes out there what have the same same issues, but. For me, that that that's what it is. It's just mentality. And what's uh, Louis Norman like outside the ring, man? I'm loving, caring. Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know I mean? <laughs> outside the ring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a not, I'm a nice person. I think I'd do anything for anyone. Um, I like to pass my knowledge on 
to, to, to the boxers. I don't know a lot, but I know a bit. So, um, but yeah, I'm just a hard-working person, just, just love life. I mean, I want you live, love and laugh, don't you? That's what you've got to do. So, would you be up for sort of like the, uh, sort of like a Haskins sort of butler level type of fight if that was offered to you? If that got offered me... Lee Haskins, Paul Butler. You know what, Lee Haskins is higher than Paul Butler. I spy Paul Butler. Paul Butler is a fantastic fighter. Let me just say that, he's a fantastic fighter. He's got a brilliant heart. But since, since that Zelante Tete uppercut, he's not been the same. I think Paul Butler is a fantastic fighter, but I think he's not at that level anymore. He's shown heart the other week when he had that fight. Um, in my opinion, I think he's near enough done now. Really? That's not horrible. I think he's not world class anymore. I think when you look at the world champions at bantamweight, you've got to look at him and go, "Nah, that you got his Lance Hesetti, Ryan Burnett, the brilliant fighters, Jamie McDonnell. You can never, if you put yourself on levels. I didn't think Paul Butler was up there. That's no disrespect to Paul Butler. If they got offered to me tomorrow, I'd take it in a heartbeat. I'll spar Paul Butler. Obviously, sparring is different. But I know how that sparring went, so it's kind That's of... That's Lee Haskins and Butler you'd take if you were offered you. Lee Haskins... I, I, oh, no, I'd take it. Don't get wrong, I'd fight anyone because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> I, Lee Haskins, I would fight. If it, if it got offered to me tomorrow, I'd take it. it he's a tough fight. Tricky, he's isn't tricky he? Tricky, yeah. You know what? He gets a, he ain't a, been given a lot of credit because he can actually box, and I love his style, the way he throws his shots. When he fought Stewie Hall, I was actually Stewie Hall's main inspiring partner, so I'm quite good at e emulating boxers. I think with Lee Askins, if he lands, he's going to knock you out. But if, if you obviously move, you ain't going to get it. So. And what do you think of that um, shy, retiring young fella, Prince Patel? Have you seen his... Uh... I've seen Princess. You know what? Prince Patel can actually box. And when people are saying he's shit, you know, he can actually box. It's just a shame as a person, he's a wanker. You know, the thing is, he's done that first interview and I was thinking... You're an arsehole, but you're good. You're a clever bloke. Because you know what? Everyone were talking about you. Everyone will literally talk about you. If he'd done that next interview, he'd been a nice person. People are like, right, I, I can understand what he was doing. But he'd done that interview, and he was even worse than what he was before. Like I say, he can box. And as a person, he's just a complete arse. I don't know why he is. You know what? Behind camera, he might actually be different. In some ways, I don't think he's all there, if, if I'm honest. If, if you look at him, he... He just don't look right. You know when he's saying he's good looking as well? <laughs> oh my God. You're like, are you that deluded? But it's true. Like I say, Prince Pell can box. He is actually quite a good boxer. I like his style. As a person, prick. So. It's, it, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like, uh, hmm. people talk about him. Yep. So he will get sort of like, perhaps bigger fights because he does build a buzz. But then it's, Where's the limit, I guess, isn't it? Is yeah, it? I think if you look at Prince Nassim, people used to buy tickets to see him get knocked out. Yeah, that's where I was going, But the yeah. difference is, he could back it up. Prince Patel, fair dues, he's been getting all these wins. You do what you've got to do to progress with your career. So if that, if that means going hungry and whatever and doing whatever he's done, fair dues. got all the respect to you. You're a boxer. I respect any boxer what gets in the ring. But you've got to bear in mind, these Hungarians, no disrespect to these Hungarians, they come over to Britain so we can beat them. Prince Patel, he's gone over there. He's won this WBO European. It's a title, more titles than what I've got. I can't really say much. But if you're going to do that, you've got to show a little bit of respect. When he was saying the stuff about Barry Jones, I think that was very disrespectful. Because Barry Jones, you know, he was an absolute He's a really nice guy, fight. yeah. You know, Jones you know, is a nice I never guy. actually got the chance to meet him. I'd love to meet him one day. Because, you know, my dad absolutely loves Barry Jones. And um, like I said, I've seen some of his fights. Right against Freitas. So, yeah. Yeah. Class. Absolutely class. No, everyone says you can't remember him. No one likes Prince Patel because of the way he acts. People remember him for the wrong reasons. That's the issue. So, <laughs> I'm just thinking now, if I know Prince, he'd, uh, he'd probably have some few words you to know, say. You know, he said quite a lot about me before. And like I say, yeah. I'm not being disrespectful to him as a boxer because he is a really good boxer. But as a person, he's not going the right way. I think, like I say, he won't be able to fight me anyway. I think if we fought him, I think I'd just wingmill at him. I actually don't like the kid as a boxer and as a person. I think he's one of these people, he's up his own arse. And he's that far up his arse, he'll be, he'll be licking his heart, honestly. But like I say, he's um, all the best for him. I hope he does well with his career. He's got to back some it up. Why not, right, fight Sonny Edwards? Why doesn't Prince Patel fight Sonny Edwards? He's gave it this claim, and, I, and I've met Sonny, you know, and Sonny's actually a lovely kid. We've had a lot of back and forth, and it's 2-0 to the Edwards, because... 
Charlie beat me. Yeah. And Sonny beat my brother. Right. So I said, we've got that one all down. But they're actually lo- lovely kids. And I think Sonny would absolutely school Prince Patel. Absolutely school them. But Prince and the put in it. Let, let's see what happens. Do you watch boxing? What, what, what do you think about the whole Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder back and forth? Are you, do, do you have an interest in that? that you know, I, I'm a big fan of boxing. And obviously I keep an eye out for everything. With Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder situation, in my opinion, I think Joshua... Beats Deontay Wilder. It, it's one of those. I think if Deontay Wilder lands, different story. Um, do I think it's gonna happen? I think it will happen. Not in the next fight. It money talks, doesn't it? So whenever the money's negotiated, before someone comes a match position, that's when the fight will happen. So we'll have to see. And um, I guess what's next for Louis Norman? When you're out next? I'm looking at September, August. Um, I've been calling out Lee McGregor. And the reason I've been calling Lee McGregor out is because he's an absolutely class boxer. I call all... You know what? I think I've been hitting the head too much because I call all these boxers out. But I, I wouldn't call them out if I didn't think I could beat him. I think Lee McGregor's a fantastic fighter. He's actually fighting for the IBF. And when I spoke to Barry, they was actually looking at me fighting him next. But because I've got my honeymoon, he's fighting. I even said to Mrs. I said, can't I fly back and fight him? But, um, sure, she loved that, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think any bantamweight in Britain, I will fight. And I think the next step is your British title. I think Josh Whale, Josh Whale is one of the strongest bantamweights I thought. People don't see that, but he's actually the strongest bantamweight I thought. Um, Spard, sorry. I think he's a very good fighter, and I think he'll move on to European soon, so that'll leave the British title open. But yeah, I'm just, I'm looking forward to just enjoying boxing and having fun. Good. Sponsors? Right, Premi Villista, absolutely brilliant. We've got Pro IoT, Chapel Health and Fitness, Catix Butchers, Shan Clothing, what I'm wearing now, Verdi Home Improvements, Fox Prince and the Maintenance Man. Like, you know what, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without them. I have to work a full time job, but they support me in my boxing through everything thick and thin. So, absolutely brilliant they are. What is it like? And one final question juggling boxing with a full-time job because we hear about this as fans but it must be it... it's hard yeah. I think when I first turned pro at 18 I look enough mum and dad like love me to bits and I think I'm the favourite out of me and my brother so they didn't make me go out to work so the kind of I was just training full-time and I can remember Renan Ra I used to train with Renan Monroe quite a bit and he was having to do the bins at the same time yeah boxing bin men. and he, he said when he quit his job that's when it went downhill for him. So since I've had a job, I think you train in the morning, you go to work and your mentality, you, you're not just focusing on boxing. So you give your mind a rest. So when you come to boxing again, you're excited again. It's very hard, especially when you've got a title fight coming up, it is very hard, but um, you deal with it. If you want to do boxing in a job, you, you've got to do it. You can't keep on moaning. I'll, I'll, I used to be one of those moaners where I think, no, I'm not getting a job. I want to mm. do what I've got to do. But no, if you've, life, you've mate. got to do it. It's life. It's, yeah, that's you know it, I mean? yeah. Boxing don't pay the bills. You know what I mean? Unfortunately for me at the minute, like I say, I'll, I'm not in it for the money. The money will come. I'm in it for the titles and I will win the titles. It's just getting there. And when I'm at 29, coming to the end of my career, that's when the money will come. I'm just, like I say, I just want to have fun. Social media, where can people get hold of you, bro? Facebook, Instagram, L, that wonder thing. I don't know what it's called. Underscore. Yeah, underscore, yeah. <laughs> Too sweet, underscore. N. And then on Twitter, if you just put Louis Norman, you should find me. Um, just, I'm constantly just sharing stuff about my sponsors, boxing, and my love life, basically. What you've got to do now is go enjoy the wedding, yep. switch off of all social media, because yep. uh, when this gets uploaded, it uh, might... Might be a bit spicy, you know how it is. So just yeah, uh, yeah, you know what? Just switch off from it all, bro. <laughs> I, just, I, I laugh at it because when people get on at me, it's, someone said on Twitter the day, "Oh, you're done." I thought I'm 24 year dude. You know what? I mean? It's only because I've been I've been pro six years now. So when people say, "Oh, you're done," I'm like, I've, I've only just begun. I think boxing fans of a certain um, what was the word before? Not level, but I think a certain kind of boxing fan would, would see the record and sort of think, oh, "Okay, uh, yeah, he's done," but. I think true boxing fans know that all fighters yeah. lose pretty much besides oh, like, I'm going to you know be like so. Delroy Spencer I'm going to have like 100 odd fights That's it. I'm going to go for it you know what I mean so. Louis I really appreciate you giving me your time thank you for speaking to Wingy Boxing and the IFL TV and we'll uh, catch up with you before the next fight I'm, I'm just up the road so yeah, spot on. Thank, thank you brother you.